Welcome aboard the, the brand new Wonder of the Seas. We are on deck 10, room 575 in a virtual balcony. Come on inside. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jared, Jordan's behind the camera, and we're JJ Cruz. We are so excited for you to be joining us on Wonder of the Seas, the world's largest cruise ship, or the world's biggest cruise ship. Let us know in the comments which one you would prefer. We have, for the very first time ever, a virtual balcony. Now, of course, this can be found on some other ships. We have just never experienced one before, and we heard from you that you might not have experienced one of these before too, so we wanna show you what this room is like and tell you all the good and the bad of a virtual balcony stateroom. So stick along till the end, it will tell you all about it and if we'll ever get one again. All right, let's start it out. First and foremost, of course, with any stateroom, we have the assembly station on the back of the door. Um, more importantly, what you should notice here is the colors. The colors are really nice on Wonder of the Season and brand new. Blue, a little bit of like an off-white or beige tone here and a lot of wood, just fresh wood. What we found with the color scheme is it's refreshing, it's inviting, and for an interior stateroom, it's bright and it's lively and it never gets dark or damp, which is a key thing for an interior stateroom. You never wanna feel like you're in a dungeon and you don't in this one. Let's get over to the bathroom. Now the bathroom here was surprisingly really large for an inside cabin. Now I'm just gonna show before I get in here that there are two hooks on the door and they're the nice Y hooks that you have two sides. So you can hook multiple things on each hook. Moving inside, you do have this beautiful, I just love the shower. The fact that there's an actual door and not a curtain is just so nice. Um, it provides plenty of space on the inside. Um, and the amenities inside, let's just jump in here real quick. We have Royal Caribbean's Salt and Breeze Double Duty Hair and Body Wash. Now, if you want to bring your own, I recommend doing so if you like to have a conditioner with you or if you like to have separate shampoo and body wash. Um, we know there's some that do. You can do that and you can put it right here in the shelf. Now, there are multiple um, functions of the shower I want to mention to you. First and foremost, the shower head itself, it can be more of a rainfall or it can be a handheld. Uh, you can also adjust it based on height. We are six foot and six foot three and it was plenty of room at the top. We haven't always found that with every cruise line, so it was really nice to see. Um, also for the shower handles, um, for controls, the power's on the left, and the temperature here on the right, you can see the red and the blue on the top. And what's also really nice, don't forget down here, a lot of people do, there's double white hooks down here. So if you have a swimsuit or something that needs to dry, let it hang right under the shower heads. A lot of people forget this. And last but not least, you have a handrail, but most importantly, a foot rest. So anyone that needs to shave their legs or take care of business in the shower like that, you can do that here. If you do need to dry additional things, if you have a large family, staying in a stateroom, you do have one of the drying uh, lines on the top as well. Now, when we get into the rest of the bathroom, it is nice to know you do have the traditional shaver outlet up here. You also have three shelves and they do have the stoppers. That is very important um, when you're rocking and moving on the seas. And this one did have a little movement to it. So that was important. You do have some cups there, the traditional toilet, of course, and all the amenities. What I will say here is with the sink and this design, it's beautiful, um, but we have some supply chain issues. And that is just because it is brand new. We're on a maiden voyage here. So you're gonna see here a little bit, there's barely a space for that stopper for something to drain. Uh, that is something that will be a quick fix, but it did not drain quickly. Um, and that will be something that they fix once we are off board. Um, before we get to the storage, you do have your control here. So hot to cold, um, it stayed nice and cool, which we like. The storage has been wonderful on this inside cabin. And that's not always true. The first closet, we do have two here. We do ask for extra hangers. That is something that we always do and we're so glad we do. But what we wanna mention here, and you won't be able to see this unless you're listening here, is the fact that the rod here is different than a lot of cruise ships. I'm just gonna show you right here. As you can see, it kind of fits perfectly on there. Now, when it fits perfectly on there, it's harder to move side to side. The good thing with that is there's not hangers. 
in the middle of the night clanging around. It's a tight fit. And so those hangers don't really slide or move. And when there's rocking in the middle of the night, it won't make those loud noises, which is really great and it's smart on Royal Caribbean to come up with. As you can see, there's two hanger rods, as well as a hook where we have our backpack stored. We also have our suitcase. This is the last day. We wanna make sure we have the full experience for you so we can tell you the good and the bad. Over here on the desk space, uh, you do have the mirror and you do have more of like that selfie ring light kind of effect here to get ready on the vanity if you have makeup or anything else you wanna get ready with. For outlets, we have multiple outlets. You do have three of the traditional US outlets, two European and two USBs, as well as the control for the light right here. When we come down to the vanity, one thing we have to mention is this beautiful chair. And why we say a beautiful chair, for anyone that works at sea like we do, Having a back like this is so nice, but also the comfortability. Both Jordan and I realize that this is a very comfortable seat. Um, and it's one that you can work long hours from if you need to. Another thing, keep in mind, this is something a lot of people don't know. This table can move. So if you wanna have it by your bedside, if you wanna have it um, over on the couch instead, you can do that as well. Speaking of the couch, this couch is really comfortable. We've been on a lot of couches where you don't want to sit on it because it feels like it's hard as a rock. This one's nice and plush. And it also comes with a trundle bed underneath. Come on on over to some more storage space here. You do have these drawers. Now, on the left-hand side is more of the traditional things that you find, like a hair dryer, which I'll bring out right here. We were a little bummed. This hair dryer looks like it's from, you know, maybe the early 2000s where it's just got a minimum max and a button to turn the power on. No attachments here for smoothing the hair or for making the hair nice and soft. Um, there's a room service menu and some tissues as well. Over here is a cooler. This is not a refrigerator. However, I will say this, it kept things really cold. Um, I, I feel like they just can't say refrigerator anymore but it really felt like a refrigerator. We put stuff in that was warm and it got cool. So it's nice, um, we did like it. Of course we prefer a refrigerator, but it really did the job. And that's all we needed to do. For the other drawers, there are four here. You got one, another large one right here. Really all of them are the same size going all the way down. So storage is really a nice, nice thing um, on Wonder of the Seas for the inside interior virtual balconies. The other storage space here, one thing we have to mention, people have been asking about this, how's the Wi-Fi on the ship? Every room has one of these routers in it now. The great thing with having a router like that is you have that direct access point in your stateroom and it really provided great Wi-Fi speeds inside the stateroom, which you sometimes have problems with, with those metal doors and other ships. So that was great. You do have a safe here as well, just a traditional safe. One, two, three, four, five shelves. And this is another part that we're talking about the supply chain issues. There's a spot for a rod there. Not a lot of room for anything, but there's a spot for a rod. We don't have one, others did have a rod. So I believe that's just something that's coming on its way. They just did not have for the maiden voyage. There's also two more drawers down here below. Perfect size, honestly, for putting some shoes away. We were worried, we we're like, where are we gonna put our shoes? There's plenty of space to stack up our shoes in this one and the one below. Now let's move, move over to the bed space. I'm gonna say this, this bed is surprisingly comfortable. We've been on a lot of beds in cruise ships and this one is probably on our top five list and it's brand new. You rarely see a brand new bed be on the top five and that's usually because you have to work it in. Not the case here, so comfortable. And that was across the cruise ship. Most people said that this is one of the most comfortable beds they've ever been in. With that, there's the side tables. And this is a huge, huge selling point on both sides, not just the light, but you have outlets, both USB and a traditional US outlet, as well as a little space down here, shelving for your side tables. That's the same on the other side. The only difference here is that there is a light switch for the main light switch. And of course, that's great to go to bed and not have to get all the way up and go in the dark to find your way out. The last two things here before we talk about the virtual balcony, of course, is this nice mirror. 
It's a stand-up mirror, so another space to get ready. Um, we wish there would have been a little bit of like a light switch or something to turn it on so you can see more light. As you can see, it's a little darker in this area. That's the only negative side of this mirror. It still works well. And then on the TV side, the TV is so nice. It's very large um, for this side of stateroom. We've been on so many ships where it's very, very small of a TV. But the, hang the, the hooks underneath are just so nice. There's five hooks here and they have the little indentation so things don't just move off of it when it's rocking. It's a really nice touch and everyone loves to have hooks at sea. Let's talk about the virtual balcony. And you probably already noticed it's not on. <laughs> the virtual balcony is supposed to give you a live feed. Yes, that is right. A live feed of the port side of the cruise ship. Now, with that live feed comes some things you don't think about. <laughs> For example, window washing. We were able to see window washing being done live above where there's just a ton of water coming down. We thought it was raining at first, and then we're like, wait a second, there's no way rain is coming down at that speed. And then we saw some suds coming, and we're like, okay, this is definitely window washing. Also, something you can't even think about until you're on board is the night feed. We've all vis we've all viewed on our TV sets at night what it looks like from the bridge or out on um, out on the sides of the ship and it's grainy because it's dark outside, right? That is the same problem you have here with the virtual balcony and that is something that did not look good. We always turned it off right when we saw it, but the big problem we had is unfortunately the virtual balcony didn't work most of our crews. Now it came to be fit. Uh, people came to fix it four times. Uh, I think it's just a connection issue and I'm sure they'll fix it right after we're gone here. But it was just one of those things that we realized we didn't need it. If you're gonna pay extra for a room, you definitely should not pay extra for a virtual balcony unless, and this is the one point, unless it has more square footage. Now, if that is true on any of the ships that you're going on and you realize there's more square footage, we didn't pay a lot more for this. I think we paid $70 total more for this room. And of course it's not worth it for the virtual balcony, but for square footage, I would say it's always worth it. So now for the good and the bad. The good definitely outweighs the bad here. And so let's talk about the good first and we'll get to the bad at the very end. The good, the storage. The storage was so plentiful for an inside stateroom. And along with that comes the nice size of both the room and the bathroom. Both of those were really nice spaces um, to where you could feel like you're not cramped and that's hard to find on an inside stateroom. Also the color scheme, it made you feel more open and lively. It, did, it didn't feel dark and dingy, which we can find on some other cruise ships and in the inside cabins. So that was a really nice add as well. Now, of course, some other good things, the bed. We all know with the bed that you want to have a good night's sleep and that is sometimes the most important thing that is true on these staterooms and that was across the ship so it doesn't have to be just our stateroom of course we didn't even talk about this but the storage under the bed was great too the storage under the bed had plenty of space for any of your suitcases including your larger suitcases the outlets are spectacular the outlets by the bedside have both the USB and the traditional US outlets as well as those light switches. So really a home run for Royal Caribbean on this new ship in regards to outlets. Last but not least, really the TV is a nice size. And we know that a lot of people come on board and like to relax late at night or early in the morning watching the news or maybe watching a movie on demand. That is something that you can do with this TV and feel like you're just at home with your big screen TV while laying in bed. Now, when we get to some of the bad here, know that the good way outweigh it, but the main bad is the virtual balcony itself. Of course, not all virtual balconies are gonna have connectivity issues, but even if it didn't have a connectivity issue for us, it just did not pan out as something that we would recommend. The fact that the night feed is so bad, um, where it's grainy and it just looks bad and it, it completely, this, this takes away from all of the thoughts of it being a real balcony because it's such a video, bad video feed, really just takes away the illusion that it is a real virtual, a real balcony. The other thing is with window washing and other things that happen outside, bugs, whatever might come on that camera lens, it 
definitely just doesn't feel the same as if it was an actual balcony. Now with that, I will say this, if they change it and don't do a live feed and do some perfect imagery that happens throughout the day at the exact same time and have a night feed where it is kind of a perfect footage, I think we would reconsider. But with the current live feed, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, the ocean waves were nice, but that was about the only thing with the virtual balcony. Now, if there is extra square footage, we still would recommend doing it if it's a small additional fee. Lastly, supply chain issues. There was something also that we did not mention earlier. There was no bed skirt uh, on the bed. That doesn't really matter to us, but they did mention at the very beginning, supply chain issues are reason why we don't have that. And that same thing happens for any small things in a stateroom on a main voyage that we found. So at the end, very few bad, lots of good. If you're coming on board Wonder of the Seas, get ready, because it's gonna be a great time. Thanks so much for joining us. Please subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are on our road to 30,000 subscribers and we wanna be have you be a part of the first 30K. Also, hit that like button and share with a friend. If you have an upcoming roll call page for Wonder of the Seas, feel free to share it to those roll call pages so people can see what these rooms look like. Thanks so much, everyone. Until next time, see ya. Jay